Entitlement is a trait often associated with cats who inherit their fortune. Second generation money. Evolution is defined as the changing characteristics of a species over several generations. It's recently occurred to me that evolution and entitlement, oddly, kind of go hand in hand. Due to the connotations, it's a connection my brain didn't want to make. But once the foundations was laid, bro, I couldn't unsee it. In the modern world, it helps you to evolve if you're free enough to step outside of conventions. But I've never believed that there's only one way to do anything. Sometimes you can achieve the same results by doing the opposite extreme. See, sometimes it's actually the lack of freedom that actually ends up steering a person toward evolution. Sometimes the previous generation draws up a blueprint and we reach evolution by simply following it. Sometimes that blueprint flies in the face of convention and in real time we take criticism for it. But people don't realize that the generation before us just used their experience to eliminate all the unnecessary steps. Therefore making our path more efficient than others copy it. Boom, shh, just evolve. Does it make us entitled brats for following that blueprint or are we just using basic common sense. When it comes to the NFL, I'm an observer. I have zero control over NFL policies, player behavior, damn sure not the rules. And despite that fact, my interest remains. But it allows me to step back and unemotionally take a look at some of the things that are going on in the sport. And there's two E-words we've been seeming to get in spades. Evolution and entitlement. A few months back, I did a video on Caleb Williams, the quote unquote poster child for this new Error. In the video, I spoke about how a lot of the things he does, to me, I don't get it, bro. I see it as weird. At the same time, bro, I can't judge the man. And while if he asked my opinion, I would say don't paint your nails, I really don't have any proof that that'll make him a better or worse quarterback at the end of the day. Caleb Williams is so talented that he's free enough to challenge convention push the boundary and still be the number one pick overall and his entitlement could lead straight to evolution thanks largely to him and marvin harrison jr there's a sentiment that this is one of the most entitled nfl draft classes of all time but i think people misunderstood the harrison jr situation marvin harrison senior was one of the greatest receivers that really I've ever seen precise, dependable, and explosive. And when you can be dependable and explosive at the same damn time, you might become an eight-time Pro Bowler, an eight-time All-Pro, and lead the league in receiving yards and receptions twice. We're talking about a player that was so damn good, mainstream media don't even talk about this. Now his son, who's taller and plays the same position, went to a more prestigious school and had two college seasons that were better statistically than his dad's best season. It's next in line, but getting smacked with the entitlement tag. Some people believe he's diva his way through the entire NFL pre-draft process. In February, he attended the NFL Combine, but he didn't participate in any of the drills. Not the 40-yard dash, not the three-cone, not even the gauntlet drill drill which he would have destroyed. What I'm about to show you doesn't represent every fan, but there's a ton of people who feel exactly like this. He did play in the ball game, no combine workouts, and now no media availability. Most diva draft class. What's up with these new kids? Why can't they just do what they're supposed to? As if cats like Eric Dickerson and Bo Jackson wasn't holding out in the 80s. Damn, they're holding out for team contracts, and he's holding out for the NFL PA contract, but it's for a better contract. We so damn hyperbolic, dog. This ain't even new this ain't even evolution this been happening prima donnas in the draft these days like caleb williams makes you wonder what are they afraid of it's not hard to figure out what they're quote unquote afraid of when you're already the consensus top pick at your position the draft combine offers you nothing you can't get better than the top quarterback in the class and you can't get better than the top receiver in the class so that means say it with me you can only move down See, I told you, bro, it ain't that hard to figure out. What if I walked up to you and said, let's make a bet. You put up $100, I'm going to put up $1. If you perform well, you keep your $100, and in addition to that, you can take home my $1. But if you don't perform well, depending on how well you perform, I get to take a chunk out of your $100. You could break even, lose a little bit, or maybe lose it all. But would you take that bet knowing you got nothing to gain? Would you put up your house in a bed against a dude bicycle? There's little to no upside, bro. I've said it a million times. So while, yes, selfishly, 
as a fan, I personally would love if everybody participated. But just because that's true, it doesn't mean I'm gonna pretend that participating in the combine is in everybody's best interest. The people who have the biggest opportunity and upside at the combine are those who didn't put up great film in college. Or maybe they played at a smaller school against lower competition. That ain't the case with Caleb Williams or Marvin Harrison Jr. At least not to the extent that it affects their draft stock, which is evident by the fact what you see what they got picked. Now, despite that rant, while I understand the player side, at the same time, I get the fan side too. As a matter of fact, bro, this is the easiest side to understand because this is where I sit. But I just stepped off to the side. That way I can get a better view, you know what I'm saying? Game perspective. But listen, bro, some of the comments do make a fair point. The only thing is we ain't really have all the information. The way strong opinions work is once we voice them joints, they pretty much set in stone will die on that hill like an ant bed on fire but i gotta think some of them would change their tune if they catch this video and hear the next thing i'm about to say Marvin Harrison Jr. is not being an entitled diva. He's doing exactly what any of us would advise him to do. Exactly what you would do if you was in his situation. And all these same people would call him stupid if he did not. This second generation NFL wide receiver is listening directly to his Hall of Fame father. Like I said, one of the greatest receivers any of us have ever watched, who throughout his career was praised pretty much nonstop. Jerry Bell from USA Today spent time with the Harrisons leading up to the draft. After breaking down all the parts of the process Junior skipped, Jerry drops a bombshell that changes everything. It was all a part of the plan laid out by his Hall of Fame father. That sentence right there flips the whole thing on his head. You mean to tell me that this kid is getting dragged on Twitter for simply following the instructions of the eight-time All-Pro? If you play receiver and your dad was Marvin Harrison, would you or would you not? take his advice i would be much more worried about harrison jr's ego if he said my hall of fame dad don't know what he's talking about here's big marv elaborating on his whole plan in a snippet from that usa today article i talked about plan was basically in december and january it was more about let's get ready for the season not get ready for the combine we worked on football, worked on being a better football player. Because even if he ran a 4-2, you think he was going to Chicago? No matter what we did, we wasn't going to be 1, 2, or 3. No matter what. Okay, maybe 3. But you're not going to be 1 or 2. So I said, June, we can go out here and do all the combine drills, do everything everybody wants us to do, and we still ain't going no higher in the draft. It's going to be the same spot, so let's go a different route. The different route was... We're going to train and rest and get ready for this season because it's 22 games, no matter how you cut it. Don't act like it don't make sense. You can't act like that damn plan. And in this very specific situation, considering all the factors, you know what I'm saying, is not better than the alternative. Why would you waste time doing track workouts when you could be preparing your body for the rigors of an NFL season? From a dude who knows, and now there's an extra game. You heard of the rookie wall? Well, this is how you scale it. So like I was trying to lay out in the intro, none of these were Junior's decisions. He was just listening to the guy who got him here in the first place. And he's not like a LeVar Ball type who doesn't have credibility. I mean, credibility from playing at a high level. As far as the entitlement tweets go, it's really kind of funny. You ever hear them background NPC type characters in anime? I don't mean no disrespect, but if you ever watch anime and hear the background NPC characters in the crowd, it's always talking trash about the heroes, you know what I'm saying? They always 100% sure of what they saying, but they're missing a very key piece of information. And when I go on Twitter, bro, I can't help but hear them background voices when I read these type of comments. This quote unquote entitled Brad got a dad who ain't never satisfied, barely praises him and think his job is to criticize him. You think that dude spoiled? When Chris Carter, we talking about a Hall of Fame receiver, said his routes were precise, bro, his dad rolled his eyes. He said, quote, my job is to eliminate weakness or find something he can improve on. When he was asked when he knew his son was special, he could have gave a generic story because he's emotional and proud. Nah, this is what he said. It was a little different because I demanded so much from him. The more important question is, not when I recognized he was special, when did he realize, well, shoot, my dad know what he talking about. My point with reading that is to kind of paint a different picture because the dude's been blessed. He's fortunate in a lot of ways. But let's not pretend that living up to the expectations of a Hall of Fame father is just a walk in the park. His dad was tough on him, so he's got his own struggles and i'm sure he had his days like this dude ain't never satisfied but at the end of the day that made him into the great receiver he is and if you're gonna be constantly criticized by somebody why not have it be one of the greatest ever in your field everything he told you to do has made you a better receiver so why would you get to the drive process and then stop listening